Hi, welcome to another video from the Cooltech channel. If you like our videos, please subscribe and press the like button to support us. Today we're gonna learn how to build this RGB lamp for your desktop. All the links to the products and uh, what you will need to build it, we will attach in the description below. So the model which we are using is model from Thingiverse site. Again, we will attach the link to it below. So there are many options to build this lamp, but we will need only three parts. What you will need, you can find in the things files. We will need the lead holder, the base, and the lamp itself, which is the fixed file. What you will need to do is to download those three files to your computer. You need the base and the fixed version of the lamp. So after saving those files into your PC now we need the slicer. You can use all the slicer which you know, but I prefer using Cura for this. If you don't have a slicer, we will attach the link to the Cura slicer in the description below. So just follow it. We will start with uh, slicing the lamp cover first. You just drag it into your Cura slicer. Now in order to print this, we need to enable one special mode, which is the vase mode. In Cura it's called Spiralize Auto Contour Mode. You just need to select this box. This will allow the Cura to print it in vase mode. All the other settings I use white PLA, I just use The infill doesn't matter because it doesn't use infill in this mode. Two hundred and ten percent for the hot end and sixty degrees for the build plate. This is the most important. The speed is fifty millimeter per second, which is pretty standard. Retraction doesn't matter, and I enable the print cooling. Next we will slice the model. Now if you print from the SD card you will just save the file and copy it to your SD card into your 3D printer. But I use Octoprint server so I just save the file to my computer. So now we just upload the sliced file which we created into the Octoprint server. And now we can begin the printing.
So after we finish printing the lamp cover, we can proceed with the next part. So now we proceed with the next part, which is the LED holder. Again, we need to drag it into the cure slicer. And this time we don't need the vase mode, so we need to cancel it. Spiralize outer contour, just uncheck the box. And all the other settings should be just okay. Now we need to slice the model. Again, save it to your computer and upload it to your Octoprint server. Or again, if you use an SD card, just save it to your SD card and move it to your printer. And let's pr print the LED holder. After finishing the LED holder printing, we have it also ready, and we will move to the to the base of the lamp. Now, just delete the LED holder part from your print bed and import the base file. Now for this model we need to set the infill percentage which I will use uh, 20% it should be ok. All the other settings are the same. Again slice the model. Save it to your SD card or save it to file for your Octoprint server. Upload the file again. And print the base model. After a while we have it ready to look like this. 
and we should have all the three parts for a lamp which is the base the lead holder and the cover now we should proceed with all the electronic components we don't need much components we just need the controller which is a node MCU and RGB LED strip we need about 54 centimeters and a few wires again we will add all the links to the products in the description so we can order them this is one cheap Arduino controller it's about nine dollars the assembly is very very simple we just need to solder three, three wires into our LED strip and three wires to our controller now important thing is that on your LED strip you have a little black arrows which indicate the direction of the signal flowing so we need to start from the arrow down otherwise your controller will not work as it should and you will not able to burn the firmware into it you can see the little black arrows pointing the direction of the signal we need to start at this end of the LED strip so we have three wires one of them is the positive 5 volts It says on this LED strip which pin you need to use. Second one is the ground. And we use this white wire. And the middle one is the data. I will use this green one. Now we finished with the LED strip. We will take the LED holder part and just insert those wires into the hole in the base. Like this. And then we will start attaching the LED strip into the channel like this on the other side of the strip you should have a sticky tape it will hold it into the place You can use a little drop of super glue just to hold it in the place so it will not unwind itself with time. That's it. Now we will move to the controller. All the information on the controller, how to wire it and the firmware upload you can find in the same page of the Thingiverse in this thing details now you need to go into this WLED project this is the page you can find all the information on this project for the wiring we go down on the page and here you have the pins to solder so we have only three wires which we need to solder into the controller. One is the power, second one is the ground and the signal. So 
So the green wire, which is a signal, will go into one, two, three, four, the fifth pin on this side. The ground is the second pin from the bottom. And the signal, sorry, the positive 5 volts is the first pin from the bottom. So now let's solder the wires into the controller. Again, the green wire, which is the data, is the fifth pin. this the ground with the second one from the bottom and the positive one is the bottom first one from the bottom that's it now we need to install the controller into the base the lamp just goes in like this now for, for the screws you can use any screw that you have that fits into the threads or you can just hot glue the base into the the control into the base if you can't find the screws that you need you can just hot glue it We need to go into this WLED project. You have all the information you need to know here, but we will just need to go to this step-by-step -step beginner tutorial. In this page you will have all the explanation on the project, also on the controller and how to use it, but what we actually need is follow this link in the node MCU PY flash releases section. This is the tool to flash the controller. Just select according to your version of Windows or Mac OS that you use, download the file. After downloading the flasher software, you just run it, it looks like this. Now we need the firmware file from the WLED project you can find it in this link below this is another github project what we need to find is the bin file which corresponds our controller version now we use ESP8266 controller so this is the file download it also That's it, now we go into our flasher software, select the firm firmware file which we downloaded. This is the file, press open. Now we need to connect our controller with USB cable to the computer. So you need to use any micro USB cable you have. Connect one end into the controller and the other end into your PC. Wait until it's recognized. And now we need to know the COM port of the controller which is connected. We go to the control panel, device manager. Now you can see that it's not recognized properly, properly, so we need to install its drivers first. To install the proper driver, we go to this link which we will add in the description. And you need to install the driver for your operating system. We hit here for Windows 7, 8, 8.1 or Windows 10. I use Windows 10 so I'll download this file. Save it to your computer. Extract. So 
select the executable file according to your Windows system. We finish installing the driver. Now we can see that it's recognized into the COM, com ports. You can see that it's COM port number 7. This is what we need to know. Now we go into the flasher software and select the COM7 port. All the other uh, settings should be left as uh, they are. The baud rate, the flash mode, and if we want to erase the flash, leave it as it is. And press the flash node MCU button. After we finish burning the firmware into the controller, we can now glue it to place. I use the hot glue, like I said, because I don't have the appropriate screws. Just a few drops should be enough. Let it cool for a few minutes. Now what you can do, you have these holes inside, you can fill it with sand or something to make the base more heavy. But I just leave it like this. Push the lead holder into place. Now it's ready and put the cover on. You can also glue it, hot glue. I just leave it like this. Now that the lamp is ready, you connect your cable into the USB port to power it. after you connect the controller into power you need to go to your phone you need to go to your phone Wi-Fi settings and you should have the WLED AP network in your phone the password is WLED1234 After you connect to the network, you should be automatically forward into the controller homepage. Uh, you should go to the controls, and here you have all the settings for your RGB lamp. You can change the color of the lamp, have a look at all the effects and choose your favorite to suit your environment. There's a lot of settings, just go ahead and play with them to see what suits you well. So now that you have this cool RGB lamp to your desktop, please subscribe to our channel and smash that like button and hope that you will join us in the next guide.